Hey everybody and welcome back to the Microgreen Show. So in today's episode we are going to interview Mark Thomas at Garfield Produce. In this interview he's going to talk about on how he was affected by the virus. With food service businesses practically closed, his business went from making $6,000 a week to $250 a week. Alright, so let's get on with that interview. Sure, I'm Mark Thomas. I'm the president and co-founder of Garfield Produce Company. We're here in East Garfield Park in Chicago and our mission was to grow the very best microgreens we could in terms of quality and taste, sell those to high-end restaurants and caterers, and use the proceeds to provide job and job opportunities for under-resourced people in under-resourced areas and, as it's turned out, for ex-felons. The virus has had a significant impact, Nick, on anybody selling to restaurants and caterers, and we're no exception at all. Um, last Monday was a great example. Um, the week before, we had s significant sales. Um, I came in on Monday, and almost every sale had been canceled. The only uh, customer that we have, actually, uh, that's continuing to do business with us at this point is a um, retail operation in the near north area of Chicago. Every other restaurant and caterer and um, food distributor related to them um, basically canceled all their orders. Now, I think from what we've been able to gather that some food distributors are still in operation but in a very reduced mode because some restaurants and caterers to keep their online operations going and their pickup operations going are still ordering um, minor amounts but again they're not ordering microgreens which is our specialty so yes okay. we were very significantly impacted um, we've been able through this retail oper operation to maintain about 10 percent of our sales which is great. Um, we're exploring now, too, other opportunities um, uh, for possible sales. Um, again, it's a little hard to get ahead of the game right now, but it's worthwhile exploring in terms of sales to grocery stores and um, other related retail outlets. And the online market is definitely one that we've um, talked about doing and have actually done a very little experimentation with, but that's another one that we're going to explore over the next week or two um, if things continue the way they are. Again, we're here in Chicago, and uh, Chicago went through a shutdown order, and what that meant is that um, social distancing became very important, but much more importantly, people who were non in non-essential jobs we're told to stay home. Um, agriculture is considered an essential job, so we have stayed in business. Um, we're staying in business primarily to support the one retail customer that we have and the retail outlet that we have, um, as well as to maintain our viability going forward as a business. We're waiting for both the city and the federal government to come through with some of the loan programs they've talked about to maintain jobs. What we've done in an effort to maintain jobs, though, is we've cut back hours significantly, and we've had to reduce staff to a certain extent. And we're hoping over the next two to three weeks to be able to use the time that we have to really engage in very deep cleaning and deferred maintenance that had been going on that we just hadn't had a chance to address. And we're very comfortable that over the next two to three weeks, we'll be able to really get in um, and simonize this operation to a T, get everything that we had wanted to do and been unable to do to get that done. Um, and an example of that is we've added ventilation, significant fans in our grow room, which we had talked about but hadn't had the time. We've put that in place now. And we're really assuming that when this crisis dies down and business resumes um, back to somewhat normal operations, will be coming out of the box with a very improved operation. And I think it's, you, you talked about food safety and just personal safety. Um, we met today with our employees and talked about what was necessary to be able to maintain operations in this environment. Um, one of the things we've done is tried to have no more than one or two people come to work at any point in time. So we cut our staffing so that we won't have as many people here. What we've also done is we've adopted some even additional food safety standards um, regarding wearing masks. I took mine off for this interview so you could hear me, but we've all adopted uh, and we were fortunate to have some N95 um, masks here in, in shop. And we've adopted um, using those and wearing those. Um, we've said that when we um, do anything now within the operation, we'll be wearing gloves. 
and we'll be sanitizing things in terms of extra special sanitation going on on a daily basis and making sure that we're washing our hands on a regular basis. So that's what we're doing with our reduced staffing is the staffing's been reduced and the hours have been reduced um, to be able to conserve some cash and some money. But we want to be able to use that time that we have now, one, to maintain our operation with our retail outlet, but also to really get in and do the deep cleaning and the deferred maintenance that needed to be done. Yeah, Nick, I know this is a really tough time for the industry. Um, people who have growing through hydroponics, growing consumable products like lettuce and tomato, I don't think are hit anywhere near as badly. And in fact, in certain cases, their business may be growing significantly. Uh, microgreens are a specialty product. They're a quality product with a really um, great flavor profile. And they really have been hit as the high-end chefs and the really sophisticated chefs have been unable to produce um, dinners and meals for people. So there's no denying that the microgreen industry has, has taken a hit here. But um, people need to understand that things will come back. Um, this isn't the end of the world. What has happened is uh, I'm waiting for the federal government and the local government um, support programs to kick in. We're assuming that what will happen, will there will be loans that will be forgivable if, in fact, people maintain certain standards um, to, to keep payroll in operation and to keep some very basic rent payments and uh, interest payments on debt. Um, we're using this time to help our operation, and um, I'm hoping that the whole industry adopts this approach. Things will be getting better. It's just a matter of time, and we need to be able to wait this out and very actively solicit all the help and support we can get from, from the governmental units that we have. It's very important to conserve as much cash as possible. Thank you, Mark. We appreciate you coming on and explaining to us on what's going on with your business. And once again, like always, be safe and happy Friday.